Cruise, please. We can really see the, the joy when we're amongst our brothers. And Jehovah's house, he was with uh, fellow worshipers of Jehovah, and, and that really lifted his spirits. It did make all of his negative thinking or fears or anxieties go away, but it helped him to endure and faithfully with to Jehovah. Okay, thank you for that. Let's move on to our, our final subheading here. Rely on Jehovah and succeed, paragraph 16 and 17. Those three examples teach us another important lesson. We should not isolate ourselves from Jehovah and his people. Nancy, who experienced extreme stress when her husband left her, says, There were many days when I just did not want to see or talk to anybody. Yet, the more I isolated myself, the sadder I became. Things changed when Nancy looked for ways to help others who were experiencing problems. She says, I listened as others explained their struggles. I noticed that when I felt more empathy for them, I felt less pity for myself. We can regain strength by attending congregation meetings. When we are at the meetings, we give Jehovah additional opportunities to be our helper and comforter. There he strengthens us by means of his Holy Spirit, his word, and his people. Meetings provide us with an opportunity to enjoy an interchange of encouragement. A sister named Sophia said, Jehovah and our brotherhood kept me going. Most important for me we were the congregation meetings. I have found that the more involved I am in the ministry and my congregation, the better I am able to deal with stress and worry. Paragraph 16 and 17, the A question is, why should we not isolate ourselves? Brother Thompson? That scripture brings out that if you isolate yourself, you will suffer your own selfish longing. And that's not what Jehovah wants. He wants us to rely on himself. And we can also uh, benefit from the rest of the congregation, no matter where you are in the world. Okay, thank you. Um, Brother Harris, please. And then we have a visiting brother right behind Brother Marin. We get these... Um, words of encouragement from the Bible, but it's interesting, even, you know, mental health professionals and stuff, they realize that being a part of something bigger than yourself will help you to deal with whatever your issue is. And and that's there, there's nothing more important than helping people come to know Jehovah, than helping people to gain everlasting life. There's nothing more important than that. And if we concentrate on that, then our problems, yes, we have them. Uh, yes, we can get depressed by them. But the reality is, is that it's small compared to the sovereignty of Jehovah. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, the visiting brother, please. Yeah, and uh, also that uh, scripture in Proverbs brings out that those who isolate themselves reject all practical wisdom. So we see the, that in the example of this sister Nancy, uh, she also uh, may have had thoughts that were so negative about her situation that she didn't realize what she did have until she started talking to other people uh, with their problems. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Brother John Mary and then Sister Mazik. We discussed David earlier and the many uh, stresses that he was under. So many we, we know what they were because they're written for us purposely. But David summed it up in Psalm 94, 17 through 19. He said, if Jehovah had not been my helper, I would soon have perished. So there's really no, there's no place else. There's, there's no... It's Jehovah is the ultimate, the, it's the final solution, I guess is really the right word. He, David goes on, he says, when anxiety is overwhelming, you're, co you're comforted and soothe me. And by our coming to meetings, by our association, by prayer, all these things that Jehovah provides for us to comfort us spiritually. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Let's move on. Oh, I forgot, Sister Mazik. Then we'll move on to the big question. And then I can actually personally... Um, identify with the sister Nancy because that has kind of been my way of dealing with problems by isolating myself but just like she experienced that is that the isolation is really a form of selfishness that I what I feel like in, in my case and when you 
do talk to others in the ministry or in other situations, informal ministry or whatever, because of your struggles, you have developed, you can develop that quality of empathy and be of help. So your your suffering, your problems are not in vain because you can use that as an experience so that you can help others. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's go to the B question now. How can we regain strength? Okay, Sister Lynn, please. Like Apostle Paul says, he's longing to see as a father that they can have an interchange of encouragement. So Jehovah provided the ministry and the congregation meeting all help us to strengthen our faith and also we do not just thinking about ourselves. We have a chance to help others. Yes, thank you, Brother Jay Marin, please, then our visiting sister. So there's been times when all of us maybe have felt a little down or just uh, being sick or or just troubled. We don't feel like coming to the meeting. But when we make that effort to enjoy that interchange of encouragement with our brothers and sisters, just like uh, Sophia did, that brotherhood that we have before and after the meetings associated with our brothers, then the meeting itself and really even getting out into the field ministry will take our mind off of our troubles and be able to help us to be stronger uh, witnesses of Jehovah. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And Brother Thomas, please. And also we learning to talk uh, about Brother Patrick. He spoke about uh, Psalms 133, verse 1. It says, how pleasant, how good for brothers to dwell together in unity. So we can apply that scripture, not daily lie. Very good. Thank you. And I forgot the sister. Okay. And can I add your name, too? Shaw. Sister Shaw. I like the part in the paragraph that says, when we go to our meetings, we give Jehovah additional opportunities to be our helper and comforter. So then the opposite's also true. If we're not going, we're not giving Jehovah that opportunity to be there for us. It's like the stress and the problems we have in the world, they have us running on E, you could say. Yeah. But Jehovah gives us these gas stations along the way. But it's our responsibility when we, we see that light come on, we need to pull over and fill up. Mm -hmm. Because that's how Jehovah's going to give us the strength to keep going. Uh, thank you for sharing. That's a good illustration. Appreciate it. Uh, the picture we have, how does that apply for us? What do we learn from this picture, these pictures? Brother Cunningham? Well, like Sister Shaw's experience, you can see one part of it where she is on E, and she's isolating herself, and she is zapped, and she could possibly be isolating and telling herself negative thoughts that are not getting her anywhere. But when she got to the Kingdom Hall, and it was an interchange, she filled up. And not only did she fill up, but she was able to go another distance to possibly help somebody else to fill up. And no doubt, our older ones with their experience and the things that they have already been through for a lot of younger people that are just going through certain issues that pop up, of course, their experience and how they got through it and relied on Jehovah is definitely um, it's premium gas. <laughs> Thank you. Let's keep that illustration going. Thank you for sharing that. Sister Hilliard and then Sister Melton, please. So she was on empty, and she it made her feel pity for herself. And to just isolate yourself isn't going to help. But in the paragraph, it talks about Nancy and how when she went to the meeting, she listened to other people's struggles. Like in the picture here, she's listening to the older sister's problems. And then that gave her more empathy for the sister. So all of a sudden, her heart's involved. She has a caring attitude, and that made her, um, that made her feel less pity. She was full then. Thank you for that. Sister Melton, already covered. Okay, good. Uh, okay, we've got a lot of hands now. Sister Marin said, uh, Brother, I mean, Brother Marin says Brother Harris, so Brother Harris, you got it. It's funny. The reality is, is if we actually sat down with each of our brothers and sisters and listened to what they have to go through, we would keep our problems. <laughs> our problems go away, right, when we hear all those? Isn't that amazing? Brother John Marin, please. The sister really went out of her way. She just didn't go to the Kingdom Hall like she normally does. She went to a rest home. 
that's where she's giving counsel to giving encouragement to the sisters because she knew that she needed it. So Jehovah sent her and made it made her way for it. So she really got a, a double benefit out of it. It wasn't just an everyday thing going to the Kingdom Hall and, and associating. She made an effort. Well, thank you for that. Brother Marin, you got a good one, I think. <laughs> Jay? So here's my takeaway from this picture. At the first part of the picture, she shows like, you know, she's dwelling on her troubles. She's not getting that interchange of encouragement. Mm-hmm. So she goes to, to uh, visit this older sister, maybe in a rest home, and she says, hey, I, at least if I can just show her a video. And so maybe she shows her a video on the iPad. But then they get to talking, and then the older sister is able to encourage the younger sister to stay strong, to keep going. Mm -hmm. So that's what I kind of got out of that picture, is not isolating ourselves, but yet get that interchange of encouragement, whatever it takes to do. There you go. Thank you for sharing that. Let's move on now to paragraph 18. We all feel discouraged sometimes. What does Jehovah give us? When we feel discouraged, let us remember that Jehovah not only promises permanent relief in the future, but also offers to help us deal with stress now. He gives us the desire and the power to overcome feelings of discouragement and hopelessness. Paragraph 18 question. If we feel discouraged, what can Jehovah give us? Mr. Harris, please. He gives us the desire and the power to overcome feelings of discouragement and hopelessness. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Let's move on to our last paragraph. Before we have it read, let's have somebody read Romans 8, 37 through 39 for us. Who would like to read that for us? Sister Miller, please. Sister Donna Miller. Romans 8, verses 37 through 39. Sorry. On the contrary, all these things we are, sorry, in all these things we are coming off completely victorious through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor governments, nor things now here, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation is able to separate us from God's love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, thank you. So let's keep that in mind as we uh, read paragraph 19. The Apostle Paul assures us that nothing can separate us from God's love. How can we help our brothers and sisters who are trying to cope with stress? The next article will analyze how we can imitate Jehovah by showing compassion and by supporting our brothers and sisters when they are stressed. Okay, thank you, Brother Crochet, for the fine reading today. So, paragraph 19, the question is, what assurance does Romans 8, 37 to 39 give us? Sister Lelania Marin, please. That's really such a powerful and encouraging thought to remember that nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing at all. Thank you for sharing that. And then one final comment. Uh, Austin Crochet, please. The Apostle Paul assures us that nothing how can we help our brothers and sisters who are trying to cope with stress? Okay, thank you, Austin. So nothing at all can separate us from God's love. So that's something we always want to keep in mind. The review questions, how would you answer? What can we learn from the way Jehovah helped Elijah to cope with stress? So we talked. Uh, Brother Thomas, please. At James, the fifth chapter, verse 17, just tells us right there that uh, Elijah had feeling just like we did. We do. Mm-hmm. Very good. And he was helped by relying on Jehovah. The uh, second one is, what do three Bible examples show us about coping with stress? Uh, Sister Hilliard, please, in the back. Well, we can we can cope if we meditate on how Jehovah has helped others, and always be sure to rely on Jehovah and to pray to Him and just let Him know everything you're going through and what you need help with. 
and also along with that, obey him by doing whatever he asks us to do. Okay, thank you. And then the final one is, what steps can we take to cope with stress? So we have to do something ourselves. Sister Weirich? Well, we know we have to rely on Jehovah, but we also we, we have to attend the congregation meetings there. We are strengthened, and uh, that's where Jehovah's Holy Spirit is and His Word and His people. So this is where we draw our encouragement and strength. Very good. And is it a good idea to just stay home if we don't feel like coming? Uh, Brother McCullough? No, we we can't isolate ourselves. We have to find uh, maybe a, a mature brother or sister, and we can talk to them about our problems, and then and that's a good way to start. Very good. Thank you for all the fine comments. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're a very nice interchange of encouragement to show us how we can deal with stress. So uh, we have one announcement. Uh, there's a meeting for field service. If anyone wants to go out and service today, Sunday's a good day to go out. Uh, Brother Dare will be taking the lead in that. We're going to find a lot of people home today, so let's think about it. Uh, okay, then finally, we're going to close with the song, song number 44. So if you're able to do so, please rise. A Prayer of the Lowly One is the song, song number 44. Afterwards, we'll invite Brother Patrick to close our meeting with, pray with a prayer. Jehovah, we ask to approach your throne this afternoon to express our deep appreciation for the love you show us. Your concern is evident about us, Father. Your appreciation of us is also evident. We're grateful to you that we receive such heartwarming instructions on how to deal with the stresses of life. And sometimes it seems so bleak, may not appear to be an answer, Father, but when we don't know what to do, we know what to do, and that is to pray to you, to pour our hearts out so that you can help us to cope with whatever circumstances or situations that causes extreme stress, Father, or even a mild form of stress. We yearn for the day when we don't have to worry about these things so that we can glorify you and honor you without distraction. 
So please be with us, Father, to help us to remember to do the things that are appropriate before your holy eyes and to stay focused, to work hard in making the adjustments that we need to make. Thank you again for this opportunity.